Hey guys, Middle Jesus here. Now, one of the fun things about having a lot of game consoles is being able to bounce around between them, you know, playing new games, old games, things like that. And so in the last week, I've kind of been in the mood to play a bunch of PlayStation 3 games. And so that's what this video is gonna be all about. These are the PlayStation 3 games that I still love going back and playing even today. Starting with a game called Folklore. Now I'm gonna be curious to know how many of you have heard of this game because I do feel like it is a bit of a, you know, hidden gem or kind of lesser known game, but I really dig it. So it's an action RPG and it's exclusive to the PlayStation 3. This is a very unusual game in that it's set in Ireland and deals with Celtic mythology. And this game has you playing as two different characters, each of them having their own chapters, as well as their own perspective on the events that are unfolding. You play as Ellen, who is this young woman who is looking to discover what happened to her mother and also what happened to her in the past because she's got a couple years there where she can't quite remember anything from that time period. And then you'll also play as a journalist named Keats, who was summoned to the small town as well. He gets this mysterious phone call kind of saying, hey, you need to come out here and try to help solve this murder. And he does because he wants to basically write up a story for his newspaper, but then very quickly gets uh, almost overwhelmed by what he discovers. And so the game goes back and forth between these two characters, but it also goes back and forth between the real world and also what they call the nether world. Now in the real world, you play basically in this third person adventure game where you walk around talking to human NPCs, you'll gather information, you're looking for clues and solving puzzles. But it's in the nether world that things get really interesting because that's where you engage in combat. So you take on the spirit of creatures that you capture during battle. You see that here where I'm battling them. And basically what you do is you knock their id, I think that's what they call id, their spirit or whatever, down to where it turns red. And then once it's red, then you can flick the controller and you'll suck in their spirit. I guess that's how you describe it. And then you can assign them to different buttons and each of these things has their own ability. So for instance, one of them may give you a strong attack. The other one will help you in blocking. The others will give you like specific magic attacks, things like that. And as you can see, the graphics are gorgeous, especially in the nether world. You can tell that a lot of love and care went into making this game. Now, one of the things I don't really like about this game is that the combat can be kind of grindy, meaning that the enemies will respawn after you've already cleared out a part of the map. And often this game does have you kind of backtracking, so they'll show up again. But thankfully, you can completely ignore them on your second playthrough of that and basically just get past them if you aren't in the mood to do all that fighting, which is very nice. As you can see here, this is a fantastic action RPG that you know not a lot of people seem to know about or at least talk about, but like I said, it is exclusive to the PlayStation 3. So it was the will of the dead that showed me the way to the netherworld. Oh boy, next up is a game that I look forward to playing. That is Tornado Outbreak. Now this game is technically not exclusive to the PlayStation 3. It also came out on the Xbox 360. However, my copy is on the PS3 and it plays really well there. I always look forward to popping a copy of this into the console and playing it. It's a game by Konami and it's very similar or maybe inspired by Katamari Damacy, that classic classic game on the PlayStation 2, but what's cool is that this has its own little twist. In this game you play as a, I don't really know what they call it, it's basically kind of like a spirit of a tornado. It doesn't really matter, there is a story here, but who cares, right? But basically you want to grow your size and you do that by picking up all these little items that are thrown about in the level. Again, very much like Katamari Damacy, and as your tornado grows in size, you'll be able to pick up more and more bigger things. But like I said, there's a couple things that make this game stand out, and the first one being, honestly, I think it has better and more intuitive controls than Katamari Damacy. Katamari Damacy is very much like tank controls, and you know it's not impossible to play that game, and it's very much a part of what makes that game cool. This one feels more natural. You'll be able to pick this one up and play it because it just uses the thumbsticks more like a third person, 
I guess action game. You, you'll understand if you play this game. You just you're just going to be able to play it quicker and probably without a lot of fuss. Another thing that makes this game stand out is that in addition to kind of just growing the size of your tornado, you also have to pick up these little fire dudes. I forget what they're called, but basically you see them hidden underneath these these items in the level. And you have to pick them up because essentially they give you fuel to help control the cloud cover. Because that's the thing, right? You're technically a storm. And so sunlight is bad for you. So you want to have a lot of cloud cover all the time. And you need to pick up these little fire dudes. I don't know why, <laughs> but you do in order to keep that powered and so that you can get through the level. And so because of that requirement, this game is very strategic compared to Katamari Damacy and changes it quite a bit because you just don't randomly go around trying to pick up everything. You need to pick up specific things because you need that extra fuel. Also, this game has boss fights and that adds a little extra something as you get towards the end of a level. But overall, this is a really fun game and flew under the radar for a lot of people. So if you have a PS3 or an Xbox 360, definitely check it out. All right, now time for some first person shooters. And I like this generation of first person shooters because I guess, you know, the graphics got more interesting. The level design got more creative. Um, I don't know, it's just, it was just the next evolution from the PlayStation 2 era, which may seem very obvious, but I do really like this era. I like the Call of Duty games, and specifically on the PlayStation 3, I really like the Killzone series and also the Resistance Fall of Man series. Now, I'm gonna combine these two because they are kind of similar in their look and also their story, at least in my mind. And both of them are very epic in scale. And uh, I guess starting with Killzone 2 was a game that had a lot of promise. You know, there was a lot of hype building up to that. And when it came out, maybe some people weren't as blown away by the graphics as perhaps they were led to believe. Personally, I think looking back on it, it is a very nice looking game and it looks great on the PlayStation 3. I was playing through it this week and capturing this footage that you guys are watching right here. And I think one of the things that definitely stood out for me is that the controls feel very modern, which is great, right? So that you can go back fairly easily and play Killzone 2 and not struggle too much. It's, it's a very natural kind of game to play, especially for modern gamers like us. And then you have Resistance 2, which is my favorite of the three games that came out on that system. And this is another example of, of you know, a first person shooter that just was very epic in scale. You know, that's what I love about these. And also that they're science fiction. You know, I'm really big into science fiction, so it's cool that these had their own look and feel to them. Again, they're very similar back and forth to them as far as like the tone and the graphics. They all have that kind of gray brown look to them, but I dig it. And so I just want to mention a couple first person shooters on here that I like to go back and play when I am in the mood for my PlayStation 3. And neither of these came out on the Xbox 360. So if you're going to play them, you need to have a PS3. Next up is a game called Puppeteer. This is a really cool platforming game that is definitely gonna give you some of those little big planet vibes, but this game definitely stands on its own as a unique PlayStation 3 experience. In this game, you are part of a player performance that is telling the story within this theater that you're seeing right here in the gameplay footage. Now, what's cool about this is that it often switches back and forth between 2D and a 3D perspective, but yet it's always being watched by this audience and you hear them as you play because they actually react to your gameplay. But the game never leaves this theater, so it's like you are essentially sitting in the audience. I love the wood block and I guess cardboard look of the graphics, like like a, a theater production put this on, right? I mean, I still think it looks amazing today, don't you think? So what's going on here? Well, you play as a character that has lost its head within like the first 30 seconds of the start of the game. And then you basically discover and wear these different heads that you find throughout the levels. And each one of these has a special ability. 
And then you're accompanied by a cat that's flying. I don't know, it's all very weird. But the reason why that cat is there is because you actually control not only your character, the character with the head, but also the cat that's flowing around the screen. And so you use the thumbsticks to do this. So for instance, as you're platforming, you'll move the cat around and he can discover things. Like for instance, there's these kids that have been kidnapped and they're trapped. You can free them, which is what you wanna do at the end of every level. Uh, but also you can discover like hidden things like extra heads, stuff like that. And it gets even weirder than that because you are also given these magic scissors that change up the gameplay and also are part of the story. But basically these scissors allow you to jump and then start cutting through the fabric that is in the background of the scene. So essentially you can kind of fly or flap your way through these levels. Again, it's so bizarre, but it's not just there for show because you use it a lot in this game, especially during boss battles. As you can see, this is a very eccentric and over the top game, but it looks amazing and it plays really well too. So if you like your platform games and you're looking for something a little bit different, well, it doesn't get more different than Puppeteer on the PlayStation 3. All right, guys, you knew I was gonna talk about racing games and there are a bunch of them on the PlayStation 3. Now, I wanna kinda highlight two of these here. The first one being, of course, MotorStorm Pacific Rift. This is a fantastic game. It's my favorite in the franchise. Um, I think there was four of them ultimately released on the PlayStation 3, but this is the one that I think that just did everything right. And I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on this because I feel like I do talk about this franchise a lot, but just know that the, the graphics, the controls, the level design, everything about this game, I think it's just an absolute masterpiece. I would love to see it remastered for the PlayStation 5. That would be amazing. But I wanna move on to Need for Speed, The Run. And the reason why I wanna talk about this game is because I feel like, again, it's one of those Need for Speed games that is kind of underrated or at least forgotten about at this point. Now, The Run is not exclusive to the PlayStation 3, but that's where I have it and that's where I typically always play it. Uh, this week I'm actually playing it, I believe for the third time, something like that, it's not a very long game, but okay. What I like about this game and what makes it kind of stand out in the franchise is that essentially it's just the cannonball run in the Need for Speed game. Meaning that you start in California and you drive all the way across the United States over to New York City. And along the way, you need to go up the ranks until you basically get there and you're the first person to show up. And what I like about this game is that it breaks up that route into different levels. And so the variety in what you drive through in this game is almost unlike any other Need for Speed game ever made. And so it's varied like the United States. So you'll go through basically cities, you'll go through countryside, you'll go through small towns, you'll go through uh, mountain ranges, you go through a avalanche that's happening in real time. It, it just goes on and on and on. And so that's what I really like about this game is that you feel like you are going on this long journey. The downside to this game, and I don't know why they did this, but they felt like they needed to add a story which is really stupid and nobody cares about. And to make matters worse, it gets you out of your car every once in a while. Like maybe I think it happens three times in this game. And so you're on foot trying to get away from the mob or the cops and it has quick time events. There is no reason why you should have quick time events in a racing game. It's so stupid. And honestly, sometimes it's actually kind of frustrating. But if you can get past that, I think the racing in this game is fantastic. Honestly, Need for Speed Run is probably in my top five of all time Need for Speed racing games. It may actually be in my top three. I think it's really good. Next up, a game I always have to come back to on the PlayStation 3 is Ratchet & Clank Future Tools of Destruction. I am a massive Ratchet & Clank fan. I love these games and I was not disappointed when the series first got on the PlayStation 3. So if you're not familiar with them, basically they are third person action platforming games with a heavy emphasis on weapons. What's cool about these games is that the developers are very creative with those weapons. For instance, you know, you have the basic long shot, you have bombs, things like that, but you also have really fun stuff. Like you've got this Groovatron disco ball that you can throw at enemies. And then as you see here, they'll uncontrollably like disco dance. And then you get to like pick them off at a distance. It's stuff like that. 
These games usually also have a weapon where you can fire minions at your enemies and they'll do the damage for you. So for instance, in this one, it's got this like goo gun that shoots this goo monster that'll, that'll like rampage around and take out your enemies. Each one of these can be upgraded the more that you use them. So it encourages you to use them, but also switch between them so that they're all highly powered towards the end of the game. I also like in these games how they have specific missions where you can play as Clank the Robot. So for instance, in this one, it's almost like Pikmin where you control these weird little aliens that only he can see and they'll help Clank get through the level. There are a few Ratchet and Clank games that came out on the PlayStation 3 and all of them are really fun. Honestly, I don't even think there is a bad Ratchet and Clank game in the entire series, really. But this is my favorite on the PlayStation 3. So it always gets some love when I'm in the mood. Oh man, here we go. Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. So if you were to ask me what my favorite Metal Gear Solid game is, well, honestly, it probably changed depending on the day, really. Sometimes my favorite would be the GameCube remake of the original Twin Snakes. Other times I'm nostalgic for Metal Gear Solid 2, which I originally played when it was new on the PlayStation 2. At the time, I thought it was just absolutely bonkers in the story, but I loved its gameplay. Also, I'm partial to that really cool remake that they did on the 3DS of Snake Eaters. That 3D effect in that game, I thought was so awesome. At least for today, I gotta go with Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots. This is where I think everything just came together. For one, it's probably the most cinematic Metal Gear Solid game that he's made, and that's saying a lot because all of these games are very cinematic. And I just thought it really worked well here. However, I do have to say it's a bit of a warning though. You have to go into this game knowing that there are going to be cutscenes. And when I say a lot of cutscenes, I do mean a lot of cutscenes. I remember the first time I played this game, there is one cutscene that's almost like a half an hour long. I remember my controller shutting off to save power because it lasted so long. But man, look at those graphics. I mean, this game still looks fantastic today, don't you think? But at its heart, this is a stealth game and it has really great stealth mechanics. I mean, Honestly, some of the best in all of video games. And I do really love the crazy characters and dialogue that is in these games. They're just, they're just unlike any other game franchise out there. They're just so crazy and fun and serious at times. Gosh, sometimes even emotional, but then they're hilarious too. Sure, the story is crazy as usual, but I dig this game a lot. Next up is another game that is exclusive to the PlayStation 3, that is 3D Dot Game Heroes. Now, this is kind of an interesting one to talk about today because, you know, recently there has been a lot of retro-inspired Zelda clones over the years, right? But back in 2010, I gotta tell you, this game was revolutionary. This game feels 100% inspired by the NES and Super NES versions of the Zelda games. But it also, as you can see from this gameplay footage, it's a mix of Minecraft kind of blocky visuals, but with that forced perspective 3D look of the environment. And at the time, nothing else looked quite like this game. And you do a lot of Zelda-like things in this game, including exploring towns, you'll talk to NPCs, you'll take on quests, you'll visit dungeons that have kind of tricky puzzles to solve. It'll all feel very familiar. And so this one's kind of tricky to talk about today, right? Because is it still amazing? Well, I mean, that's, that's a tough one because I do think it's so familiar and similar to Zelda that you could kind of say, nah, I don't need to play this game. But on the PlayStation 3, there is nothing else like it. Plus it's got that old school nostalgia with just that sprinkle of the, the fancy graphics. And so I'm glad I have it in the collection because I do go back every once in a while and play it like I did this week. All right guys, well that is just some of the PlayStation 3 games that I love going back and replaying even today. But there are so many great games released for the PlayStation 3 and this video could have easily been twice as long. But I would love to know down in the comments if you still have a PlayStation 3 hooked up and what games do you go back and play on it even today? Please let me know down in the comments. And as always guys, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.